about or what you're facing this morning or what's going on. I mean, we all know what's going on for the majority of people, but Christ is still the Lord. And His kingdom is going to be lasting forever. And that's a reassurance that we can take home this morning. I know there's a lot of people missing. I know there's quite a number that are feeling sick. And from what I understand, from what I heard, none of what's been reported back to me as COVID is just some wintertime sickness that I just as soon stayed home. I was hoping that being careful and staying away from people and wearing masks would keep some of those bugs away. And I think it has a good point, but just, I don't know. Why, why do we have to have them over the holidays? That's just, <laughs> I have them at all, but maybe do it on the middle of summer when it's too hot to go anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, that's my two cents for this morning. But it's so good to see all of you here. I trust that you had a blessed Christmas. And I trust that you are enjoying the fact that Christ came for you. So let's start service with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for those that are able to be here. We pray you will bless those that are watching online and be with those that aren't feeling well. And uh, just give us a good service in you in your name. Amen. Grab a hymnal, and I'm pretty sure we're going to sing a few more Christmas songs. Let's first sing from hymn number 181, 181, please.
turn back one page to number 180. You say you're getting off. Are you, Monica, you're already off, or are you half one, or? She's half one. Okay. <laughs> I figured I need to put something in there. It's very for Dean and Monica. They just don't like us anymore. I guess they want to go back to Florida. Pray for them for safety. Supposed to be 77 down there, ladies. Well, it would be warmer than here, I guess. Somebody else? Praise, prayer request? Who are you pointing at? Go ahead. Um, we had a surprise the other day when we went up to his house to see if everything was okay with his house. And we got a big surprise because somebody ran into the telephone and broke it in half. And, um, I mean, it's not a 
the middle top fence pole, it's one of those great big round ones with the lights on for the people to see and the stop sign. Well, they did pretty good damage to that, and but the person had sort of hit and run, and we found out it was a tractor trailer that hit it. <coughs> and uh, I heard, I hope there's some damage to it, so we can figure out who did it, because he got it on the turnpike. But it woke up my neighbors because it shook their house. That's how bad he hit that big pole. I'm surprised it's still standing there, but now we got to figure out who's going to be paying for the pole because it's on his property. They're not cheap if you have to buy them. That was a fun Christmas surprise, huh? Yes, it was. Anybody else? Okay. I've really been uh, thankful for uh, well, this Christmas season, but the music that I've been listening to this Christmas season has just really been worshipful about the last week. I've just really worshipped with music, and I am so thankful for yep. for Christian music, for and just for heaven salvation and, and in my heart and feeling that. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. You praying for my cousin and her family there. I told you last week <clears throat> about my cousin's boy, 12 year old boy that was killed in that farming accident and uh, his they call it what they call it a visitation service, I think is what they call it today, and then the funeral's tomorrow. They actually uh, made the decision to donate all of his organs to uh, the organ don donation bank and over I think it was over 100 people received help from him. So they are, aren't having a view of because of that. But um, let's pray for them. All right. We're all done. So let's bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you again for the beautiful season that we're celebrating and continuing to celebrate. We thank you that you're king and that you're Lord. And we praise you for what you're doing for us. Even in the midst of all the chaos, we can be still and know that you are God. And we thank you for um, just this blessed hope that you have given us. We can think of those here in our midst that are struggling. There's many that are sick or um, know those that are not doing well. Would you be with them this morning? Would you keep us safe? Would you help us to not live in fear, but yet help us to um, also be safe as well? And we just pray that you give us your protection. Um, we think of those that have been struggling for quite some time. We think of Al and we think of uh, Peggy and, and Tim. Think of the Horners. Think of Louisa. Would you give them all a special touch here this morning? Would you? Be with them in their homes. Give them a feeling of your peace. Be with uh, Gene and Monica as they're traveling here. Give them safety. Uh, be with Diane and Claire as they're trying to figure out that situation they're dealing with. Would you help each one of us as we go through heading to this new year that we have a better resolve, that we need to be with salt and light to the world and that we can draw closer to you. Bless us in this service in your name. Amen. All right, so no church tonight. I'm sure everyone knows that. No Wednesday night service this week. And uh, if you have council reports, get them in quickly to Greg as soon as you can. Email them it is preferable. If you have questions about that, please see me. Council meeting is on February 6th at this point at 630. And that's all the announcements I have right now. Unless I'm missing one. I do believe at this point, um, Beethoven and Stradivarius have a special for us. You like that, Karen?
That was a holy night. What would have been like to get in there? Before I forget, if you want a poinsettia. Now we're on, sorry. If you want a poinsettia, come get one. They're starting to wilt and fall away. So, two, three, four, six or seven here, I think. Twas the night after Christmas when all through the house every creature was searching, both me and my spouse. The stockings, the drawers, we looked everywhere in hopes the receipts for our gifts would be there. <laughs> when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the house to see what was the matter. But what to my wondering eyes should I see but my neighbor too searching his trash on the street? More rapid than eagles he looked but in vain, and he shouted his creditors and called them by name. On Visa, on MasterCard, on Discover, I'm appalled. I've thrown cash away, cash away, cash away all. <laughs> I've always liked this poem. <laughs> He'd splurged once again, and he knew it too well. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. And then in a twinkling, I heard in my head a gentle reminder from what he had said. I, too, was as guilty from my head to my foot. My conscience was tarnished like ashes and soot. I focused this season on presents and things, and not on my family, my friends, and my kin. I spoke not a word, but I went straight to my work, ran into my house. I'd been such a jerk. Right up to my wife, I came with a hug and kissed all my kids right there on the rug. The night after Christmas is better, said I, than never recalling in Christmas is Christ. The best of all gifts which to us has been given is Jesus who died for our sins and is risen. So I'd like you to turn to Luke chapter 2 again. <coughs> Christmas is over now, but I guess we just go back to normal life and everything is put away. Isn't that what's usually practice? But is that the correct way to view Christmas? I know for myself as a kid, the day after Christmas was really as exciting and almost more exciting in some ways than the day of Christmas because then we got to play with our presents. Because usually we open our presents and run off to some relative's house and then we didn't get to see him and we got home and late and you know, got to play with him the next day. But as I got older, that got to be a little bit of a challenge because mom didn't like hammers and, and routers and stuff like that on the kitchen table and in the living room. So um, that became a little bit of a challenge. But I think for society in general, the day after Christmas is, is kind of a letdown. It's, you know, all the excitement and hype leading up to Christmas is, is done. And the festivities are over. The anticipation, you know, it's, it's over. Now it's time to... Return the gifts that weren't liked or that broke. And it's crazy how many checkout lines at Walmart are dedicated the week after Christmas to return only. I mean, carts and carts and cartloads of stuff. I mean, wow. And you know what really bothers me? The day after Christmas, there is no Christmas music. It's done. You can't find it on the radio station. I'll give it to WCRH. They still played it at least yesterday. I don't know if they still are. Um, I mean, for, for pity's sakes, they started playing Christmas music around Halloween this year. Right. And they stopped the day after Christmas. Now, that doesn't make sense to me. Christmas isn't over. <laughs> it's time to take down the tree, you know, and, and to carefully put all those fragile ornaments away. And if you have a real tree and you have a <clears throat> foolish enough to get one nowadays. Um, <laughs> no, it's just a mess. But you have all those needles to clean up. The blessed, blessed part of that holiday. It's time to take off the lights, you know, off the bushes in the house. And if it's snowed, then it's dangerous to do so because you probably didn't put them up when it snowed, but then there's snow on the roof and you can't leave them up till 4th of July. 
That, by the way, is why I let other people put up Christmas lights and we can enjoy theirs. We just don't put any up. You know. We'll let, we'll let uh, Matt and his wife down here put them up and we'll just go down and look at them. But we're, it's over. We're bored, right? Follow along with me as I read from Luke chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. And yes, we use these scriptures already this year. Totally different spin to it, though. And of course, we're picking up on where the shepherds had finished with their visit of the newborn king. Luke 2, 17 through 20. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. This text quite literally tells the reaction of what these early Christmas players, some of them, what they did following their visit to the newborn king. And today there are many common activities and traditions that coincide with the celebration of Christmas. You know, enjoying decorations and wrapping and unwrapping gifts, holly and mistletoe, lots of food, lots of junk, food, um, singing carols, hustle and bustle, last minute shopping, all that stuff. And really none of those activities, they're, they're okay, there's nothing wrong with them. They can become annoying at times, some of them. But the only one that really coincides with the birth is the giving of the gifts. It isn't even known for sure when Jesus was born. We simply chose December 25th as a good day to celebrate it. And that's not the important part of the story anyway. Celebrating Christmas is a good idea. It's a great idea. But some Christians have gotten frustrated and, and disenchanted with it because it's too commercialized now. And I agree. But that shouldn't stop us from celebrating the true meaning of Christmas. We shouldn't allow those negative aspects to rob us of the joy that it should bring. So should we celebrate Christmas? Yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. But the point I want to make to you today is Christmas Day, December 25th, shouldn't be the shutoff for celebrating Christmas. It should rather be the kickoff. It should rather be the start of our Christmas celebrations. Because in reality, Christmas Day is the start of a year-long celebration of what Jesus Christ did for us. And then we should start it over again the next Christmas. The song, Good Christian Men Rejoice, speaks about this. It says, Good Christian Men Rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. So when you really think about it, Christmas, as a Christian, should just be started. In our passage we read there are four things, four aspects, four attitudes, if you want to say, responses that were taken from these early Christmas players. Just give me a second. So four responses that happened, these first Christmas players, what, what they responded with after they saw the Christ child. And we start with the shepherds. They went away proclaiming. Look at verse 17 again. After they saw him, they went away and made widely known what was concerning this child. In other words, they told everyone. They were excited. They, were, they, were, they couldn't contain it. So let's back up a little bit. Shepherds in that day were the base elements of society, okay? Their word, probably in that day, was trusted like maybe we'd trust a gypsy today or a politician. <laughs> it's entirely possible that the shepherds were illiterate. Uh, that's what makes this story so incredible. These rough, low-life, they're, they're uneducated men. They were the first ones to share the good news of Jesus Christ. 
There was a period of time, some of you may be familiar with it, known as the Silent Years. This was the end of Malachi to the beginning of Gen uh, Genesis, beginning of Matthew. Um, there was a period when the last prophet stopped speaking from his message from God until Christ was born. And that was a 400-year period. Now, that's a long time, you think about it, when God wasn't speaking to mankind. But think about this and grasp this concept. Prophets were doing God's messaging previously. And the next time God spoke to mankind was through angels to lowly shepherds. Think about that. Uneducated, they certainly weren't prophets. And God spoke to them first. See, that's not how we would have set that stage. We wouldn't have done it that way. So think with me for a minute. If you and I would be the ones that created the Christian story, how would we have done it? We would have probably used a really rich, affluent couple that's somewhere in Jerusalem with a really big house. And we would have chosen maybe kings and princes to share the Christmas story with first. We wouldn't have told shepherds. There's a song called A Strange Way to Save the World. I don't know if many of you heard this, but it's, it's, it's a neat song. And it says how God chose a strange way to save the world. God doesn't work the way we work. So let's go back to the proclaiming part. If we were shepherds, would we have obeyed that message? Would we have immediately run to the manger and, and checked out what was going on? Question, would we even have believed what the angels said? That's a pretty crazy story. But the big thing I want you to grasp is the proclaiming part. The shepherds were so excited, they had to tell somebody. I'm sorry, there are way too many distractions here this morning. <laughs> Do you have mine as I have to go back and sit with mommy in the back? <coughs> Just go back with mommy in the back right now. Go. That is what you call having children. <laughs> I'm not sure where the slingshot came from. It's not supposed to be over here in church. Okay, so let me try to concentrate now. So would we have would we have done what the shepherds did? Would we have rushed out to sell someone? Those shepherds couldn't keep it to themselves. And I can't help but wonder, how excited are we to share the good news of Jesus Christ? How excited are we to, to spread this news to the world? This world is spinning out of control. And don't you think that there might be someone that needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ? There's peace that he can bring. There's joy that he can bring. And they're waiting to hear it. That's awesome. That's incredible. That's exciting news. How willing and how exciting are we to share that with them? And you know what else? Here's the kicker. We don't have any excuse. If the shepherds did it, and they were uneducated, illiterate, uh, I think we can do it. Are we proclaiming that Jesus has come? And then there was a great deal of marveling. If you look back at verse 18... And all of those that heard it marveled at those things that were told them by the shepherds. Other versions use the word amazement or wonder. To say that these people marveled or were amazed at what the shepherds told them, that was a classic understatement. They, the story was incredible because you have, to, you have to think about how this looked. I mean, shepherds, very low-life people, Telling this wild story about angels came and they told us good news and a baby was it's going to save the world, but he's born and he's born in a place where cattle eat out of. And that's how God's going to save the world. Now we know that story, and we think it's incredible because we know it. But think about the people that were told that story. There's a lot of people that 
there's amazement in our lives when we experience something like our team winning for the first time and how long when they just don't seem to win anything. Like they say that if you want to um, not get COVID, you're supposed to go to Philadelphia because the Eagles can't catch anything, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Or you have a child that does something incredibly stupid and they live to tell the story. There's amazement that happens over that. Like when I came home the other day and saw some very uneven blocks of wood, logs that were on the parking lot with a thin plank that was set up on top of it. And he said, I ramped right over it. Yeah. You know the crazy part of that story? My wife took a video of it while I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's amazement and stuff like that. But that's uh, an earthly, just, wow, that was crazy. But this is a, a, a heavenly and awe of a non-earthly amazement. It goes beyond human understanding in words that we just can't describe. The story of the work of God unfolding his plan of redemption, that is God at work, and that's amazing. We know God created the world out of nothing, and, and we experience the awe and the nature and the beauty of that. We look around, we see that every day. He spoke, and stars flew into the place where they needed to go, and he spoke, and animals started running and hopping around, and, and he made man out of the dust of the ground, and then made a wife for him out of one of his ribs. I mean, that's just crazy stuff. The story of the majesty and the glory and splendor of God continues all the way through scriptures, until Revelation, when he's described as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Isaiah 52, 15 says that kings will shut their mouths at him. Kind of an odd verse, but if you think about it, there's going to come a day when all the big wigs, the tough, highfalutin kings and rulers and that guys that think they're something else will have to bow in humble humility before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and they won't be able to say a word. All their big talk and grand ideas and all the crazy stuff they think they're going to do, they're suddenly going to be mute in humility in front of our Savior. We're talking about marveling that was done that first Christmas, and I have a question for you. Are you amazed at Christ Jesus? Are you amazed at what he's done for you? If you managed to go through this past Christmas season without pausing to think about the wonder and the majesty and, and, and the glory of it all, then you missed Christmas. That sense of wonder is lost on the world. It is completely lost. How can it be regained? It starts with us. It starts with us not focusing so much on the stuff that distracts us and all the craziness that's going on right now, but rather truly focusing on the Christ of Christmas. There's something really cool about a little toddler looking at the Christmas tree for the first time and looking at the ornaments and looking at snow and looking at the lights. There's something just the, uh, the awe of a child for the first time looking at something through their eyes, the newness, the wonder of it. And that's what we as adults need to grab a hold of. We need to see with fresh eyes the wonder and the majesty of what Jesus did for us. Once we get that new sense of wonder, then we need to tell others how they can experience it too. And then there was a lot of pondering. If you look again at verse 19, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. This is something internal that was done. Mary didn't make a big deal. Mary didn't go out and, and share it with everybody like the shepherds did. And she didn't go out and just made widely known like the shepherds did. But she quietly meditated and she really thought deeply and she, she was really thinking about all this. She thought back to her betrothal to Joseph and her angel visit. And she thought about her visit to her cousin Mary and what that looked like and then the birth of John the Baptist. And she thought, she thought about how Joseph was reassured by an angel. This is, this is all going to be okay. It's going to work out. God's got a great plan. And she thought about the shepherds and their visit and how their visit signified that her baby was taking the place of the sheep that they were raising. She had a lot to think about. And I want us all to stop and think for a minute ourselves. Think over this past year and think about the intensity of this year and how out of whack it is. And 
Think about the heartaches and the stress and the turmoil. Maybe some of it, some of our families have really hit home and we, we, we know someone or have a relative that passed because of this. Think about those then in the world that don't know Jesus. And compare how hard things are that we have experienced and then think about how hard it must be to not know Jesus and go through that. When I think about that and I realize, you know what? I need to have a little bit of grace and what we would call stupidity of some of the things that's going on today because some of these people don't know Jesus and they don't know how to react. This year, I think more than any other Christmas I've ever experienced, I think I experienced the true meaning of Christmas. It really hit home to me. All, all the other stuff is kind of put on hold in a way. I mean, we still had Christmas and not, not quite like we did before. We were, you know, staying home more, and, and personally, I had a lot of time to myself. I was working on wood projects and making a mess, and I just had a lot of quiet, not quiet, but a lot of time to think. And I want you, if you haven't done it yet, stop and ponder, like Mary did. Stop and meditate. Stop and thank Jesus for what he's done. And then tell others about it. And the last action we see in this passage in verse 20 is glorifying. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. And this verse tells us the shepherds were profoundly changed by what had happened. The day before, they were tending their sheep, they were minding their own business, they were doing their thing, and then the angels came and everything was turned upside down. And they were totally different because of it. The next day, they became evangelists, and they were proclaiming the good news. They were the first missionaries, the first preachers, if you will. The key thing to note here is where they glorified God. They didn't go to the temple. They didn't go into the city. They went back. They went back. They returned to their home, to wherever that hillside or whatever, whatever that looked like. They went back to their occupation. Shepherds knew they had to go back to their sheep, so they did. But they did it with a different purpose in mind. They used their occupation to glorify God. See, in our own lives, most of us, with the exception of some people that I feel bad for that have to work on the holidays, um, I feel really bad for the healthcare workers and snowplow drivers if it snows or you know, whoever else has to work on Christmas Day. You know, most of us take off Christmas and then we celebrate with our family. And then on December 26th or whenever we have to, we go back to work. And if you're a pastor, you don't have to. Um, just, just stay the same, right? Um, go back to our jobs. Go back to our occupations. You, you go back to school or wherever that return is. But we need to take something from the shepherds here and learn something. We shouldn't go back the same. We should go back to our lives with of normality, but with a purpose of showing glory to God through the good news of Jesus Christ. Our lives should bring glory to God. And how we do that is going to vary from person to person because each one of you has a different scenario where you work at or where, who you interact with. And, I mean, some of you might have a boss that's just unreasonable. I know Brian, oh no, you're, oh that's Sabrina, all right. You might have some neighbors that just are hard to get along with. And we really don't have that problem here. But what is our attitudes displaying to those that we run into and rub shoulders with day after day? Are we bringing glory to Christ? Is our lives pointing them to Christ? See, that's how we truly glorify God. And that's what the shepherds did. They returned and they glorified God. How are we doing with that? It's actually a really loaded question. So, have you experienced Jesus in a new way this Christmas? Christmas Day should be the start of our celebrations. So take note from this passage that we use this morning. Really put to practice what the shepherds and Mary and the others did. Proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is born. Marvel at God's amazing power. Ponder what he's done for us. And then glorify him through our testimony to those around us. 
Because that way we can have Christmas all year long. You know, that's isn't there a song that says they want to have Christmas all year long or something along those lines? Well, literally, we as Christians should be celebrating Christmas all year long. So I trust you do that. So I would wish you a Merry Christmas today and tomorrow and next week and in the middle of July because Christ has come. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you came. We thank you so much. Help us not to lose the glory of Christmas. Help us to focus on what you did for us and help us to be a witness and, and testimony to those around us. Thank you that amidst all the distractions and the chaos and the confusion that we know, we can truly, truly know peace. Bless everyone today. And bless those that are home watching. Would you give them a good day? In your name, amen. Thank you.